Alrighty, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video to the channel. Today we're actually going to be going over a different game uh, that I don't think I really covered except for once, but this is going to be Dying Light 2. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you guys that, you know, watch my channel like this game or if you played it a whole lot or if you want to actually see some tips and stuff. But, you know, I wanted to start it off with a, a really cool thing uh, that I see not a whole lot of people talk about. And that is... Uh, fighting one of the most hardest things in the game, which is the volatile. So if you guys don't know, you know, that's supposed to be like one of the most infamous uh, zombie types in the game, and you can only really encounter them at night. So essentially what they are is like the normal biter kind of deal that you kind of see all over the place, but, uh, or not necessarily the biter, but, uh, there's a different type of infected where it's like zombies when they're like freshly infected and stuff, so they have, uh, you know, the smarts of a person to be able to actually dodge your attacks and hit you instead of going in for like a lunge for a bite or anything so it's more of like real fast hitting attacks and they're generally you know way harder to kill and they're way way more dangerous so essentially what it does is it takes one of those types of zombies or the the virals is what they're called when they're like that and uh, over several uh, years for the game logic anyway for like zombies and like how they mutate and stuff in the game uh, when they're in the dark long enough they'll eventually uh, become super jacked <laughs> and they have like you know like one to th three inches of armor covering their entire body so they essentially become a super mutant and uh, it's some scary stuff to where uh, you as a night runner or a pilgrim in this game that they call it uh, you know, you can use stamina like this, like you eventually run out of stamina, and your guy can only run so fast. These uh, creatures will make it, or actually have the ability to where they don't run out of stamina, and they also go a little bit faster to you. So, if you don't do parkour skills, like jumping around and like trying to get on different elevated areas, or making it to where it's tricky for them to try to actually hit you, uh, they're going to quickly run you down and pounce on you and take you out. So it is extremely tough to actually kill them, and they are ter uh, terrifying. Their jaws like split open at the bottom, so they kind of look like they have like a weird mandible kind of looking deal. And it is actually one of the most terrifying things that you could possibly find in the game. They were also in Dying Light 1, but in this one, or in Dying Light 2 now, since it's 15 years uh, lore-wise, uh, the mutations and stuff got way worse and made it to where these things are way, way tougher somehow. So yeah, so they're even more nightmarish. It really is just the armor and stuff that they have on them is really the only difference. But yeah, so I wanted to go over a couple things that a lot of people that do play this game probably don't know. So obviously, uh, you know, these things only come out at night. Uh, usually you can use a UV flashlight like I'm doing here, which is essentially artificial sunlight you can use. You can also see like there's a little UV indicator. So in the game, you can use UV light to uh, burn the zombie's flesh and it's kind of like the a very similar deal to the zombie slash vampire looking things from I Am Legend uh, so I think that's originally like one of their first concepts they kind of stole from that movie in a sense but uh, yeah so it's, it's going to work very similar to that so you can actually use this flashlight to stun the zombies and stuff so that's going to be one of your main deals and you can also hold triangle if you're on console or whatever it is I think it's Y on Xbox I'm not really sure I'm not an Xbox player but uh or whatever it is on PC as well but usually you know the top on the right side of your controller there it's going to be triangle for me but you can look behind you when you're being chased and you can activate the flashlight as well like that you'll be able to flash them you can't really see too well in the daylight but you'll have that that will give you enough time for you to stun them. And uh, now the flashlight does run out after a couple seconds. As you can see on the bottom left, that little bar, it'll slowly go down. It'll turn off and it'll have to take a pretty good amount of time to actually recharge. So it's not going to be a uh, you know, constant feature that you get to have with you to you know constantly be able to rely on. So why or like how can you actually fight these things when you are on a high enough level? Because you know eventually as you know one of the, the gamers you know you have to take down at least everything in the game at least once right you want to take on the biggest guy that you could possibly get to i recommend fighting these things when you're on a very high level with a very large health pool 
Uh, 420 health is sheerly not, or but not sheerly, but uh, barely enough to actually be able to fight these things. You would usually be able to take about four hits or five if they hit you hard enough uh, before you actually go down. So they do just about 100 damage every time they hit you. So do not fight these things on a low level. That is really suicide unless you are extremely good at reading these things just real fast. So that's the first thing. So obviously, you know, you, you want to fight these things by the time you hit the end of the game. This one, I'm already done with the entire main campaign, uh, not the side missions though. So I want to go over the skills that you would want to have when you are actually going to be trying to fight these things and how you'd actually use them to your advantage to uh, be able to read and attack these things. So they work very similarly to people. So obviously when people go in for like a, like a side swing, uh, in the first Dying Light game, you can actually have this ability to where uh, when they're about to swing, you can hold square on this one, and you can technically counter them. So you'll grab them and then, like push them away in a different direction. Now, Volatiles will do that same attack, but it's only for their light ones. So they're like real heavy, real long, kind of like wind up for their arms about to hit you, uh, which is actually 90% of their attacks uh, when they're you're fighting them head on, like right next to you, uh, is going to be unblockable. So but you will see the lighter attacks and stuff that they'll try to hit him, but it's not very common, so you're not going to be using this skill a whole lot. But that is a good way to kind of like settle or like uh, unsettle them and kind of... Oh shoot, that, this is a lamb in my field. But uh, yeah, so... It's able to kind of like throw them back and stun them to where their back is facing you, so you can probably get in a good like hit or two. Uh, while they're, you know, they're trying to turn around and try to fight you. Now that's not really going to do a whole lot of damage at all to them because, you know, they're supposed to be the hardest thing to fight in the game. I mean, I have weapons that do over 200 damage if, when they're fully upgraded. And, uh, yeah, they don't really do a whole lot. It's like a, a good chunk of their health, but it's not really good enough at all to really be able to kill them very quickly. So uh, that's one of the abilities you would want. Drop kicking, don't really do this. So drop kicking, you know, when against like any other type of enemy except for a bomber, uh, it is actually really good on because, you know, you kick them and they'll go flying uh, as, you know, the natural drop kick from Dying Light 1 did. So you would imagine it would be a really good uh, skill to use. It is not against Volatiles in this game. All you're going to do is slightly stagger them so they'll only take like one or two steps back when you hit them. And it really doesn't do a hard, like, a hardly enough kind of like actual stunning effect towards them. So they don't really do anything. And, uh, oh yeah, kicking them off the edges or anything like that from, like, tall buildings don't really do anything. Uh, they, won't, they won't take damage from uh, fall damage. So uh, that is one thing to know, unless you kick them off of, like, a dang skyscraper like that. Or, like, a really high one, then probably they will. I haven't actually tried that, but most buildings and stuff, like, from here, if you kick the zombie down onto that street, they're going to die. Uh, if they're up on this building here, so they will take fall damage or at least get a little bit injured. These things do not do that, so... Um, drop kicks are pretty much near useless, so do not get this skill. Uh, but you do want the actual grab and pull away or like push away kind of deal. And you want to make it to where that you're able to dodge attacks and stuff, making it to where it's slow motion, so you're able to come in and hit another enemy. That'll kind of like stagger them for a bit. So you want to have all these skills open for you. And uh, also this one too, all that does is just make it to where you can throw them a little bit further when you uh, do counter their attack. But that will make it to where you're able to stagger the Volatile as much as you possibly can when you're trying to evade their hits. Which is very hard to do because eventually they will quickly try to adapt to your um, strategies to dodge them and stuff and fight, uh, try to fight you. So they will actually mix up their attack patterns. Which make it to where it is one of the most deadliest AI because it's actually learning from you while you're attacking it. So it is extremely tough to do so you want to have all those skills open on the right side uh this is not where i want to be let me try to get out of this area here so everything that you can to get staggering effects or anything that you can actually use to control them in any kind of situation as much as possible so uh we'll have that let me get up to a safe area for like this building here uh, before i actually go into the menu again But uh, yeah, so you want to have all those open. Uh, vault kick you're going to have to have. That's actually like, you know, the tutorial kind of 
skill points, so you're going to have to have that one open. Uh, you're not going to be really using that one much unless you're in the chase level 4 where there's actually more of them to attack. And you also have the air kick. Now you can push L1 when you're about to fall onto someone and that will actually uh, kick them out of the air. So this one actually does pretty well. I think it does about the same thing as the draw kick does. It only does like a little bit of a, of a stagger. So these two aren't really worth it. And this one, all that does is make this ball kick more stronger, so that one doesn't really do anything. Uh, but the head stomp, so this one is what you would want to go to. So you have to go through all these useless perks when it comes to fighting volatiles uh, to get to the head stomp. So if you do somehow knock down the volatile to where it's on an unlevel ground, to where it's actually like laying down, you can put square, and your guy will do a head stomp. And this is essentially like the head kick from Dying Light 1, where you crush your brains or their, their head there making it to where you know it's an instant kill so i don't think this kills them right off the bat but it does do about like a quarter of their health so it does a ton of damage to them and it's really good to have unfortunately you're gonna have to waste a lot of points to be able to actually use that against volatiles uh power attack this one's real good this is like just a heavy hit it just gives you a little bit more uh damage out of your attacks and stuff so it just kind of doubles it just gives you a heavy attack uh, you want to be using that as much as you possibly can against a Volatile. Uh, perfect parry. This makes it to where that when they are about to attack you, you can push L1 and try to block. Now, since most of their attacks are heavy, this really only really works for uh, uh, light attacks when it comes to Volatiles because it just works a little bit differently on them than it does with people. And then you also want to have the block charge. Now, this one's also really good. So you can use this uh, to do a couple things. So obviously, you know, you can hold L1 uh, if you're on controller or left or uh, left trigger, I guess is what you would be calling it for both consoles. Uh, you can hold L1 and then press square. You'll make it to where that you kind of just like do this weird like tackle and you push them down to the ground and you can continue running. So you can actually jump over a, a gap between buildings and turn around and right when that uh, volatile is chasing you, they'll jump after you behind you. You can run and then do that tackle and knock them off onto the ground. And hopefully, if you can line it up right, if you know the, the layout of the map, you can actually land them onto spikes for like barricades and stuff, which will give you an insta kill. So that's the best way I've learned how to use the skill. Aside from that, it's just making it to where that if there is a volatile that kind of like spawns in front of you while you're being chased, you can use that to get ahead of them. And, uh, but the best one out of the entire thing. Uh, let me see if I can actually find it. I don't know if it's in this one. Where is it? I think it's in... It's supposed to be a charge. That's the windmill one. Grapple throw. Perfect dodge. It's supposed to be a charge. There's some type of charge uh, that you can get later on in the game to where, I don't know if it's in the parkour section, it might be. Well, there's the crowd runner where you can actually charge in and run through a bunch of people, but uh, you can use a charge attack. You can run and uh, hold R2, that's how you do it. I'm not sure exactly where it is on here, I'm looking for it, but uh, where in the world is this thing? But anyway, yeah, so you can run into a uh, zombie or into the volatile and you'll be able to hit them and then actually charge it into them and stuns them so it'll, it'll actually be completely worthless on a volatile it'll do the same effect as the drop kick or the air kick unless you hit them with the uv light so like i said the uv light is the one weakness that this thing does have that you can always rely on that actually does you know some type of effect on them that's actually significant so uh all your parkour skills and all your drop kicks and stuff like that are completely near useless when it comes to actually fighting them unless you hit them with the UV light first and that will put them in a weird like stun kind of state and that's when you mess them up with everything you possibly got and uh, you can use all your like you know combat stuff to act to your advantage after hitting them with that UV light but again you know it only lasts for so long so if you guys really want to fight these things grab as much military tech as you can and start upgrading that flashlight to the max because you're going to need every bit of it as you can uh, you can also use uv like light sticks uh to your advantage as well to set up a little bit of a safe zone so you can just wail on them for a little bit which works a little bit better but if you don't want like using a bunch of resources go with the uv light works just as fine and it's completely free
Uh, so I would rather go with that. So that will make it to where your entire skill set is all open. So the only thing though, when you're using a drop kick or anything, you have to keep that UV light on your target at all times. So as soon as you get rid of it, or as soon as you remove that light from them, they're no longer stunned. And if you try to follow it with the kick while your UV lights are not on there, it's just going to do the basic like uh, effect to where it only kind of like stuns them and they only take like two steps back a little bit so and then they'll you know they'll wind up another attack and just hit you back and you know kill you so uh you have to keep them on there at all times so a hit and run kind of tactic is really what i would be recommending unless you're really really good at figuring these things out when it comes to hard like heavy or light attacks that they're trying to try to do to you <laughs> So that's going to open that up and then I'm also going to go over a couple of attachments that you can use or the best ones to use on these things. Now I use for my combo is uh, for this katana here is the spark mod. It's a, like the electric kind of mod that you get to have and it gives you currently a 20 was a 20% crit chance that I have on here. It's not fully upgraded but it does a lot of damage. But a 20% chance that every time you hit a zombie, uh, you'll be able to not only electrocute him and stun him and does a good chunk of damage. You'll be also be able to chain to like a good like three or four extra zombies. So if you're on the, the chase level four where there's like four or five volatiles, you're able to stun all of them at once. So it gives you some really good crowd control to either escape, which I recommend doing because you're not fighting five of them at once. Uh, that's just not happening. Or, you know, you can try to get in a few swings and then try to run away because that's just really suicidal. These things are real tough. It's not really worth trying to fight several of these things. Uh, yeah, so you can use that. And you can also use a second mod that works really well with this. And it is the impact mod. I want to get away from these guys real quick so I can show y'all. Because I think when I go into the menu to show all this stuff, it doesn't really pause the game unless I pause it like that. So, uh, opposed to, you know, bringing up the menu like here. As you can hear that but uh i can go over to here and you can get the fling mod or not the impact mod but it does say blast on there and uh what this does is essentially it's just like dying light one so you'll have the same kind of crit chance depending on how high of a level it is it's a little bit lower level so it doesn't have that 20 percent chance yet it's at 16 so it's almost there so what this thing does though when you hit a zombie it has that crit chance when you hit that crit chance all it's going to do is blast them and it'll make it to where that your uh, strong light hits and stuff just kind of flings your enemy in a certain direction a pretty good ways away so uh, you can hit a uh, volatile with the uv flashlight and wail on them with any kind of weapon that has the fling mod to it and you can send them flying like this thing will do tons of damage on them and it's the best combo they can use for the spark and fling uh, to get the most out of your swings, especially when they have a really high chance for each mod on there. Uh, so you put that on there, you make it to where it's extremely powerful. And this is probably the best one to use because right now this thing does 216. Uh, it does do a good chunk of damage. I've killed about two or three of these things uh, when I'm doing the night runs and stuff. Just grinding up on a bunch of skills or XP for skills. But aside from that, I mean, that's all the, the weapon mods that you want to have. I do recommend using more of a lighter weapon, the slashing ones, because you can actually read in the stats here. Uh, it'll say next to damage, like 216 damage. On the right side, it'll tell you what class it's in. It's in slashing. So uh, there is a different class on here, and it's like this one right here. It's just blunt, so it gives you like an automatic, uh, like, blowback kind of deal. So it's a lot like uh, the actual fling mod but naturally on the uh, weapon however it is very slow for handling and it's not really worth doing especially when you're fighting something that you know like two to three times faster than all your swings and stuff so uh, it sounds good that you're able to knock them around like that but you're not really going to get many swings in before like four or five of them gang up on you and start messing you up so uh, it's not really worth it so put on the slashing weapon or class so you're able to hit fast and hard and just put on the, the impact mod and you'll be good or, or the fling mod and you'll be set for that since you're technically just having the same effect but it's just not as often but 
eventually, you know, when you're actually a skilled player with finding these things with everything I showed you here, uh, you'll get really good at killing them because, you know, you just kind of figure out how to kill these things over time. You'll learn all their attack patterns and what they're going to do afterwards. I haven't really mastered them just yet. I just figured out, you know, a bunch of different abilities and different things I tried to actually kill them. So, uh, yeah, give this a try in game if you guys do play this game enough and uh, let me know how it goes for y'all. So it, it is really tough to actually buy these things. Like I said, like, you know, even with all these tips, it is going to be tough to actually take one of these things out. It's just going to make it to where it's way easier because I don't ever see people talking about the best way of going about fighting uh, zombies and stuff, especially the harder ones like this. So hope you guys uh, enjoy the video. If you want to see more from this game, just let me know down in the comments and I'll see y'all in the next one.